why don't we just jump into a clip from Steven Crowder? Okay. And just see where this takes us. Let's roll it. He has this clip about, you know, who the real enemies are. And Steven Crowder, we think he's self-professed Christian. Yeah, he's been really clear about that. Yeah. Yeah. Believer. So the angle we're taking is what, what, how do we respond now? How do Christians behave? Like, how do we engage in response to this? And um, is this an appropriate use of language and whatnot? And is so it forth. biblical be based on truth so you know what let me be uh clear here let's first start by hopefully outlining who is not your enemy your- J- just real quick earlier in this video we're seven minutes in he appeared to be fighting back tears talking about the roller coaster of emotions he's been on i i think it's pretty apparent now if you don't know him he's got a large a very large following yeah uh, mostly on rumble i think he's still on youtube i don't know if he's officially on youtube but there's clips that get put to youtube Okay. Very large following political commentator. Everyone knows who Steven Crowder is. Conservative, and I think he loves Trump, which is why it's not your family members or other members of your community, the community you've chosen and hopefully take an active role in every day. Even those maybe who vote differently from you. Someone believes in higher taxes, they want longer government subsidized maternity leave, or maybe some more social safety nets. They're not your enemy. They're wrong. They're not your enemy. Glad to hear that. Hell, I'd even self-identified socialists who are open about their beliefs, their disagreements with you, and who will engage in a form of ideas with you on an honest playing field. They're not your enemy. They're certainly wrong, in my opinion, but they're not your enemy. But the people out there who've been calling President Trump and people like you a Nazi or a white supremacist, they are the enemy. People who label you a fascist for being pro-life, they are the enemy. People who burned down cities and killed, murdered conservative Americans, fellow Americans at rallies, they are your enemy. The people who forced you to shut down your business, ruining your family's livelihood, never to be recovered again over a virus without you even having a say while claiming that they are doing it to save democracy, guess what? They are the enemy and the people actively involved in shutting down silencing political speech for protesting said lockdowns they are the enemy the political the, the ruling class who decided that rather than run on an even playing field to try and destroy a man's livelihood his business his legacy and the remainder of president trump's life because before they take his life they try and take his name That's what they do. Who's they? The progressive left. The hateful progressive left. Uh, When he puts it all together, when he puts all of those things together, I mean, it's just crazy how sideways the political world has gone. Just not in the United States, but across the world. And Trump's the cherry on the top. So let's imagine that we agree with him. Those are your enemies. What are we supposed to do with our enemies? Did you read my cheat sheet? Andy? Oh, sorry. Did I steal it? Oh, no. No, great minds. Yeah, what is the... the Literally, the Bible says... Love and, your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Yeah. Yeah, so how would this fit into... By the way, he didn't say what to do. Yet. Correct. He didn't have any action. So I don't know what happens in the rest of that video. And well, yeah. m- maybe that's where he goes. Did you, I don't know if you finished watching it. Does, do you get the sense that that's what he's telling you? I went through almost, <laughs> almost all of it. And this is just a 20 minute chunk of probably yeah. his hour and sure. whatever podcast. So that's the first thing I thought of. It's like, okay, well, how we just stopped it there is the political progressive left. And so he does a good job. Like even disagreeing with he, yeah. he straw mans a little bit. Even people that are like this version of whatever, I like how he's like they're not your enemy. Your community's not your enemy. Yeah, that's so important to remember. But when he gets to the political progressive left, what what do people that are super politically partisan and active think when they think that they're going to think the person that votes differently than you? Yeah, the person that sees things a little bit different. Not necessarily. Some people can do the nuance game and see like, yeah, but the, there's an agenda from the elites, but the average lefty person that I see at the grocery store, they're not my enemy. That That's important to separate. And that's what he's trying to... They're probably at Trader Joe's, right? That's the grocery store. Yeah. It used to be Whole Foods, but now it's... That's the evil Amazon empire. Yeah, yeah. So. yeah, the man took over that one. They're back to Trader Joe's. So I don't know how easy it is for people. The, the people that are activated enough and... This kid that shot at Trump, 
he's not right. No. Whatever's going on with him, that is not an appropriate response to any disagreement. But at the same time, there has been so much vitriolic. Yeah, the question that people ask is, what leads up to someone doing something like this? Yes. What are the influences in their lives that cause them to come to the point that they think, I need to crawl up on top of a building with a rifle and take a shot at a presidential candidate? Yeah. And that's that's where you see these montage clips of political opposition saying things like calls for violence, claiming uh, Donald Trump needs to be stopped at all costs, and he's Hitler. Well, what he's do you literally do Hitler. What he- do you do with Hitler? What do you mean when you say stopped at uh, at all costs? Yeah, and that he's a complete threat to um, uh, America and democracy. At some level, do you who who recognizes the gravity or the responsibility for their words? I, I'm not suggesting that people shouldn't own their own actions, as in the shooter sh- should not be owning his own actions. Clearly, he's taken responsibility for it, and he's dead. Yeah. But at the same time, the the question, while I can't speak for non Christians, the question for Christians should be: How are you participating in this type of rhetoric? Are you adding to it in a way that encourages this kind of behavior or discourages this kind of behavior? Uh, Matt, pull up the picture in picture again, real quick. So his shirt says fight like hell. It's one of those things like I know he's, when he says enemy, and at the beginning of the video, I want to be very fair, political violence is like, it's never okay. Ne- it's never okay. It's like he justifies, you know, the American Revolution and a few things like, yeah, extreme circumstances calling for violence and whatnot that. But he's implying um, that this is not extreme circumstances that would call for violence. Yes, don't yeah. don't do violence. But still, there is. What do you do with enemies? You want to defeat them, just on a general level. Well, you don't want to bow down to them, for sure. And you want you should defeat your enemy. If you have an enemy, the idea is is win and defeat. And so the fight like hell shirt, and for him, it's a very political fight. So I don't look at him. He doesn't wear his faith on his sleeve like Charlie Kirk does. Charlie, Char- Charlie Kirk's another guy that's very politically active. He's going around from church to church, mm-hmm. po- pop- popular with some of our families. It's not the same, but he's not he's not far off. I mean, it's not like NBA, WNBA. It's not that far off. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Matt, you should have gone to me on that one. That was my joke. So now you're fired. Uh, there you Good go. Good try. All right, congratulations. All right. First you can't firing. fire me twice, can, can, Andy. Oh, I can fire people as many times as I want. Watch me, Matt. I'm on you like a hawk now. I mean, actually, if I like hell, I ignored the gun that's on this table, too. Like a so, hawk tour. So the gun on Crowder's table, if I like hell, all that stuff. It is like, okay, if you're a political animal and you're a political advocate, I get it. That's a ballpark you play in. What are the meta messages that you're sending? I, I'm not there. If you're going to play the God card and insinuate, which he's not doing here. And I think he has done versions of it before. It's not a secret that he's Christian. To be a Christian is to be, have the appropriate views and to fight politically the the appropriate way. And And, I'm I'm not against political stances either. And by the way, when he does his like man on the street thing and he has these like very strong disagreements with people Mm -hmm. on, on charged topics, he is super respectful and people usually are not other people are not so yeah he, yeah. he does demonstrate it in real life yeah. but but that doesn't take away from what you're alluding to here and so for people like him and i actually have a tweet that i'll pull up in a in a bit for charlie kirk using the bible to justify trump getting saved which is pretty fun i confess I'm not a fan of the go and speak in churches where you're not allowed to tell people how to vote and so you do a lot of God talk and then you pretend to be, oh, I'm sorry, I just have to mention Trump. It feels like some of these guys, and in a weird way, not in a weird way, this is a little bit weird because some of the political stances with these people, I am more sympathetic to than the other side. But what I don't like is the, we know Trump doesn't come off well to a lot of Christians so we got to go on these tours to churches and it feels like it's convinced Christians that it's okay. You can have a clean conscience and vote for Trump. And I'm not saying don't vote for Trump. Like I don't have problems with people that vote for Trump or don't vote for Trump. But when you're going to put the God card behind a candidate, that's where the- It's always I, dangerous, it's right? Like, 
I worry about the idolatry and like God has destined him for this. And therefore you ignore some warning signs potentially. And this happens on the left, like uh, Christians on the left justified Biden and anybody that's not Trump yeah, based on some things they'll say it sometimes Biden and those and that side of the aisle will say the right things when it comes to helping people. They're more vocal, more vocal about helping the poor, the homeless, all that stuff. But what you know, whether the policies bear fruit is a different conversation. But so Trump. I get people like not like I get a Christian. I don't like Trump, and this guy's saying, "Listen, the Bible talks a lot about the immigrant, the outcast. Yeah, who we should help, welcome the immigrants because they will vote for you." <laughs> <laughs> right? Yes, that's may- maybe a secondary rub. But so I get a Christian being not liking the bombastic nature of Trump and then being attracted to some of the language of the left side of the aisle. But yeah. then we do a version of it too, where it's like we want to grasp that ring of power. And that's where my biggest rub is state power. Just imagine Lord of the Rings. The ring of power will corrupt. And if you establish power using that ring, eventually the power is going to swing to the other side. They're going to have the ring. And are you going to enjoy the powers that they now have because of what you did for good? I'm, I'm looking at you, Boromir. Bunch of golems out there, man. Yeah. Bunch of golems. Yeah. Sorry. I, I got a little no, no, weird salady, but no, it's, stream it's of consciousness. Good. Hey, it's just opinions. You know, I could change them. Let them know in the comment section, people. Uh, that I'm wrong. Yeah. Tell him why he's wrong. Good news. Yeah. You don't have to get mad. I'm probably wrong. That's cool. <laughs> it seems like, I mean, it's a cyclical thing in terms of power, but the in terms of responding to this and what he, what Steven Crowder is talking about is simply like they've been up in the ante for several years. Who's they? A, a, the Democrats, the liberals really in, in the media and just pushing and pushing and just like Democrats and creating, power. creating as much hate, as much conflict as they possibly can. And then heaving it to the other side and going there, the, they're the problem. It's like, this, this wasn't a problem. This wasn't a problem during the Trump years. And now it's a problem. And, and so the, the fear of, you know, losing that power, th- just they're throwing the kitchen sink in, but the response of us as Christians it's like, um, I mean, okay, someone ch- took a shot at the president. I mean, if it had killed him, um, there might be war on the streets right now. Yeah, that seems like that's a possibility. Right. Which is weird to say out we're, loud. We were so right? close. Like it's inches. And, and I'm, I'm actually refreshed, but so far, you know, whatever this is, four or five days in, there, there no hasn't, reaction. There hasn't been reaction it, f- from the right or from elements on the right, and I pray that that well, continues to be the case. I th- well, I think uh, you mean like a, a response, like a yeah. phys- physical response. Yeah, I'll go after. It. There's I mean, been reactions, but not physical. Yes, response. like a, like a vi- like an actual physical. I mean, if no one's taking shots at Joe Biden. <laughs> no, not worth it. The I mean the co- the conversation between yeah. a conservative and a liberal. The liberal is off the reservation in terms of emotions and the conservative is just um throwing things perfect out, right throwing things out, pretty much throwing things out there and the the liberal just doesn't know how to respond and has no leverage and can't make an argument and they just uh, i don't know i can't even talk to you anymore who are you talking about right now i'm talking about all those conversations that steven crowder has on uh, in his interviews on the street Oh yeah, well he cherry picks those too. I talk to people and they're like, I can't talk to you. And I know, I know things are heated. I, I don't disagree. Well, no, with that. I'm just saying. You said Stephen Crowder, so for me too, just having yeah. conversations with a liberal, they can't have a conversation. They don't know what to do. They just throw what they've been throw in your face, what they've been taught, which is you're racist and you're a white man, and you, uh, I'll never be able to have wealth. And I'd be like, well, you got free speech and you got you know the freedom to go and create a business and do whatever you want and they're like ah oh, they don't have capacity or even anything to back up their argument so they just give up and walk away pissed off at what i have no idea and i think that has created this undercurrent for what has happened to Donald Trump and unfortunately we got four more months before the election and i don't know where this goes